You may have heard of this molecule, nitric oxide. And if you do a quick search on this molecule, in some cases you're gonna find that there seems to be tremendous health benefits from this molecule. And yet at the same time, if you do a little deeper digging, you might find that nitric oxide is actually being blamed for a lot of oxidative stress and inflammation inside of our bodies. So is nitric oxide helpful or is it hurtful? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. This is the last video of a series of videos that we've been doing on a variety of different gases that have therapeutic value. Gases as a compound is generally an overlooked and a very misunderstood category with regard to therapeutic compounds that we could be using to improve our health. We covered oxygen, we covered nitrogen, we've covered hydrogen and carbon dioxide, and today we're gonna to cover nitric oxide. What are the benefits? How do we get it? What are some of the risks and consequences that we need to be aware of when attempting to stimulate nitric oxide inside of our bodies? So as far as gases go, nitric oxide's a little different than the other ones that we've been talking about in a few different ways. One, in that it's not a naturally occurring gas that we're just gonna extract from the atmosphere like oxygen and nitrogen are. Two, from an administrative standpoint, we can't breathe nitric oxide in like we can oxygen or nitrogen or even hydrogen and carbon dioxide. This is a gas that we find inside of our body naturally. We do have a certain amount of it already in our body naturally, but it's not like we can just take in nitric oxide directly. The way that we get nitric oxide is through stimulating certain pathways that either may increase or decrease the release of nitric oxide inside of our body. So then how is nitric oxide released inside of our body? Well, nitric oxide is released by a compound called nitric oxide synthase. In other words, Synthase means to produce. It's an enzyme inside of our body that produces nitric oxide. There are three types of nitric oxide, ENOS or endothelial nitric oxide synthase, INOS or inducible nitric oxide synthase, and NNOS, neuronal nitric oxide synthase. So to say that nitric oxide is either all good or all helpful or all bad or all harmful right away would be a fallacy because we know that there's three different types. Within each of the three types, they play three very distinct roles. And so we need to understand all three of them and what roles they play to better understand in what ways does nitric oxide help us and or hurt us. So let's take each one at a time. ENOS, endothelial nitric oxide synthase. That is a nitric oxide that is released by the endothelium or the lining of our blood vessels. The main role of ENOS is to cause vasodilation. We talked about vasodilation when we spoke about carbon dioxide, which is also a vasodilator, and the importance of vasodilation from the standpoint of improved blood flow, and with that, improved nutrient delivery and oxygen delivery to our cells. We can also talk about vasodilation from the standpoint of reduced blood pressure. As the walls of our arteries start to dilate, it reduces the pressure of the flow of blood through those arteries. And so that increased diameter could help lower blood pressure. NNOS, neuronal nitric oxide synthase. Well, this is an enzyme that we find in muscular tissue as well as in the nervous system. And NNOS plays a role also in vasodilation, but also plays a role in calcium signaling, in muscular contraction and the strength of muscular contraction, as well as has neuroprotective mechanisms protecting neurons from other sources of oxidative stress and inflammation. INOS, or inducible nitric oxide synthase, is produced from L-arginine, an amino acid. And INOS plays a much bigger role in the immune system and specifically may induce inflammation. And INOS is one of the major free radical forms of nitric oxide. And while all three of these variations are going to have helpful and potentially harmful effects, INOS is typically the one that we're trying to keep more under control and lower as a high INOS may stimulate too much free radical production and ultimately cellular damage. On the contrary, ENOS and NNOS are the types of nitric oxide in many cases that we're trying to stimulate because we want the vasodilation, we want the improved circulation, we want the increased muscular contraction and calcium signaling, as well as the neuroprotective effects of these other two variations of nitric oxide. And again, like so many other conversations we've had in this channel, it's not that we want zero INOS because it does play some valuable roles. It also doesn't mean we want all the ENOS and NNOS we can get. 
These things need to be in relative balance with one another and with the rest of the biological environment. We're working really hard over here at HBOT USA to make sure that all the people looking for this kind of information are able to find it. When you like it, when you subscribe to it, when you share these videos, that tells YouTube that this content is valuable. When YouTube knows this content is valuable, they tend to help other people searching similar concepts find the answers that they're looking for. So please do me a favor, like it, subscribe it, and share it so that YouTube knows how valuable the information is that we're giving you. So what are some things that we know that might stimulate ENOS and NNOS without stimulating INOS too much? So here are a few examples. Again, there's no real way that we can just take or breathe nitric oxide into our body. So we're looking at ways of gently stimulating the production through stimulating nitric oxide synthase. We know that red light frequencies, red light, near infrared, infrared light frequencies stimulate ENOS. So we can use red light therapies to stimulate that vascular response to improve vasodilation, improve circulation, blood flow, and thereby the delivery of nutrients and oxygen, as well as the carrying away of those cellular waste products. We know that hyperbaric oxygen is also a very strong stimulator of both ENOS now and also NNOS. Methylene blue. Methylene blue seems to have a great effect on NNOS while also helping to reduce INOS activity. So methylene blue is a great modulator of nitric oxide synthase by improving at least the NNOS that we want. It may also have some effect on the ENOS, but it seems to also downregulate INOS activity. And then there's certain supplements that could also stimulate nitric oxide synthase. Now, in the athletic world, there's a lot of pre-workout compounds out there, and they use L-arginine as the primary nitric oxide booster. Now, the only risk or consequence to that is that INOS is specifically generated from L-arginine. And so while it does increase nitric oxide, we don't want to increase INOS too much. So some of these pre-workouts just have a lot of L-arginine, but they also might have other compounds that help suppress some of that INOS activity. Other supplements that also have a boosting effect on nitric oxide synthase are supplements that are high in beetroot or even high in garlic or certain fermented garlic products. And as some of these products are more food-based, you're going to have a more evenly blended effect on the variety of different nitric oxide synthase inside of our body so that we're not pushing any one of those nitric oxide levels too high. So my opinion is if we were going to use supplements for boosting our NOS, we really want to look for more gentle and food-based products that are going to have a more balanced effect on the nitric oxide pathways. So there's so much more to nitric oxide than just this. However, I really wanted to just introduce nitric oxide as a compound, as a molecule. Number one, to show you what it does. Number two, to start to introduce some concepts of how we can stimulate and balance that system. But number three, also to dispel some of these myths. Nitric oxide is not the cause of all disease, nor is it the cure for everything that goes wrong with our health. Nitric oxide is a signaling molecule that's necessary inside of our body and keeping it in balance, stimulating certain sides of nitric oxide while trying to inhibit other sides of nitric oxide and keeping them in relative balance with one another is going to be the key to keeping a healthy relationship with nitric oxide and using it to improve our health rather than harm our health. Again, this is the last of a series of videos on different gases and how they affect our biology and physiology. So please go ahead and take a look at some of the previous videos on oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide so that you too can understand the role that some of these gases play in our body, how we can gain access to them, how we can benefit from them, and how we can certainly mitigate any of the risks and consequences of using them. Thanks again for your attention and we'll see you on the next video.